Hello, my name is Dr. Megan Piper. I'm a clinical psychologist, a tobacco researcher, and I also served on the 2000 and 2008 Public Health Service guidelines treating tobacco use and dependence. I know, as a healthcare provider, you're interested in helping your patients quit smoking. It's certainly the number one thing they can do to improve their health. But many healthcare providers feel like they don't have the skills and certainly feel like they don't have the time to do this effectively in many clinical settings. So my colleagues and I have developed a worksheet for you to help your patients to guide them through and develop an evidence-based quit plan that will double or even triple their chances of being successful in a quit attempt. So the first thing we want to do is help the patient get ready. And that means setting a quit date. Ideally, the quit date is within a week or two of when they meet with you, and what it means is on that quit date, when they wake up, not even a single puff. And in order to do that, we want to make sure that they get rid of their cigarettes, their ashtrays, lighters, matches, anything that might remind them of smoking, or offer some sort of cue or easy way to slip back in as they start this quit attempt. In addition, we want to talk about triggers. Are there certain activities or times of day when they always smoke? Encourage smokers to avoid using alcohol, especially in the first couple weeks of their quit attempt. Talk about and ask them to make plans, concrete plans, for how they're going to deal with each of these triggers that they face. Then, talk about past quit attempts if you have time. Understand what was successful and what got them in trouble. The idea then is to build on what was successful, things that they've used that have been helpful in the past, and again, make sure to identify plans or concrete strategies for them to deal with the things that have tripped them up in the past. After we've talked about getting ready, the next thing we want to talk about is medications. According to the Public Health Service guideline, every smoker who is medically eligible should receive smoking cessation medication. Again, this could even double or triple their chances of being successful. So you want to make sure your patients have access to this particular tool. On the sheet, we have listed the five different nicotine replacement options, as well as bupropion and varenicline, the prescription pills that can be used to help smokers quit. Ideally, what you want to do is write down the medications. Uh, and, it, and with things like the ad libs, how many do you want them to use per day? Or how do you want them to use the medication? And of course, what day you're going to start them. You can certainly start them uh, with the nicotine replacement on the quit day or even a couple of weeks before if it, they feel like it would be helpful to get into some routine, start using things prior to the quit date. We know that it is safe and there is also evidence that it's effective. Of course, bupropion and varenicline are typically started one to two weeks prior to the quit date so that they've reached optimal levels prior to the quit day. Finally, we want to make sure that the patients get the support they need. We know medication is helpful, we know support is helpful, but we also know, have evidence that having the two together provides the best chance that smokers will be able to quit. So with getting support, we encourage you to write down the names of friends and family who can be supportive. And also encourage the patients to talk to that person. How can they best be supportive? Do you want them to ask you about your quit and check in with you? Or do you not want any nagging, not want anybody to reach out until you reach out to them? Identifying the best way people can be supportive is also important. We have on here the smokefree.gov, that's the National Cancer Institute website. It's got a great resource with lots of information about quitting, and it also has a texting program. People can sign up to receive informational and supportive texts as they go through their quit. Uh, finally, we have on here the quit line. 1-800-QUIT-NOW is a free 24-7 resource that smokers have to work with a counselor on setting up a quit plan, maybe going into more detail than you were able to go into, as well as uh, as needed help. If they're having a hard time, if they're having a challenge, they can call and get support at any time. So we hope that with this concrete plan, your patients leave feeling like they have more self-efficacy, more motivation, and a concrete plan for how to help them quit, as well as access now to these evidence-based interventions. Good luck. All right, Steve, so we're almost done with our visit today, but there's one thing I want to talk about, and that's your smoking. I'm sure you know quitting smoking would be the number one thing you could do for your health. And it's certainly something I could help you with. Is that something you're interested in talking about today? Yes, I'm ready to quit. Oh, wonderful. Okay. So let me grab a quit plan here. You know, quitting smoking is hard, and I want to make sure when you leave today, you feel like you have a plan and you know what you're going to do to be successful. All right. So the first thing, get your name down. And the first thing we want to do then is to set a quit date. And what I mean by that is when you wake up on that morning, 
no more smoking at all, not even a single puff. So do you have a day in mind that you'd like to try? Yeah, I'd like to try March 14th. Okay, March 14th. Is there any special significance to March 14th? Well, it's pie day and I really like pie. Okay, great. Well, that'll be, that'll be a wonderful uh, motivator. You can get up and think pie instead of cigarettes. Uh, so what that means then is March 13th, you want to get rid of all your cigarettes. Smoke them, throw them away, give them away. Make sure there are no cigarettes, ashtrays, lighters, anything to remind you of smoking when you wake up that next morning, okay? Then we want to think about uh, are there times or things that you usually do when you smoke? Times of day when you always smoke, that sort of thing. Yeah, I usually smoke in the morning right before I have coffee. Okay. Um, so that'll be one thing then you'll want to think about making a plan for. How can I do things differently on my quit day so I'm not sitting there drinking my coffee and wishing I had a cigarette? So I'm going to write down here morning and I want you to make a plan for what you're going to do in the mornings. Are there other things that you usually associate with smoking? Yeah, I usually smoke when I'm on a break with my coworkers, and I usually also smoke at parties with my friends. Okay, so then those are two other situations we'll want to make sure that you work on. So coworkers and breaks, thinking about what you might do, would that be staying uh, inside or taking a break with other people or at different times, making a plan for that, and then also making a plan for how you can still be social with friends. Um, but of course, maybe it means that you take a break from those friends or you do things uh, with them in places where you can't smoke. Anyway, just getting a set plan for how you're going to handle these situations, okay? Uh, have you quit in the past? Yes, I've tried once before. Okay, and what was helpful when you did? It was helpful to exercise a lot and then I also tried the patch. Okay, so exercise was helpful, all right, and the patch was helpful. And what got in your way? I went to a couple parties with some friends and, and there was alcohol involved and I usually kind of mix alcohol and, and cigarettes. Okay, so then that's another thing we'll want to make sure, I'm going to circle that on here, is avoiding alcohol at least for the first couple weeks while you're trying to quit, just so that you really have a solid foundation of what it's like to be smoke free, you've dealt with the cravings before you try to add alcohol back into the situation, okay? Sounds good. All right, and you said the patch was helpful. Um, is that something you'd like to try again? Yeah, sure. Okay, great. And how many cigarettes do you smoke on average each day? Uh, about half a pack a day. Okay, so then I'm going to start with the 21 milligram patch. You'll use that for four weeks, then you'll step down to a 14 and then a 7 milligram patch. Okay. Now, did you feel like the patch was enough or were you still having a lot of cravings last time? I still had a few uh, cravings, so maybe it would be good to have something other than just the patch. Okay, great. That was exactly what I was going to suggest. Um, we have something called the mini lozenge. It looks sort of like a big Tic Tac. Um, and the idea there would be it's something you could use maybe in the morning before you have your breakfast. Maybe you could use it before you go out with friends or during breaks. But we also want to make sure that you're using enough uh, throughout the day to make sure that even if you do have those cravings, they're not as bad. So what I'm going to write down here is the mini lozenge, and I want you to shoot for ideally nine a day, okay? I know that sounds like a lot, but it's still not going to be as much nicotine as you would get from your cigarettes. Um, and how early after you wake up do you have your first cigarette? Usually within the first half hour. Okay, great. So then I'm going to suggest that you start with the four milligram mini lozenges. Nine of those a day plus the patch should really manage your withdrawal symptoms. Plus it gives you something to do. It gives you another tool for all of those different set settings we talked about. Okay, so you'll have your exercise your plans for the morning, for breaks at work, for being social with friends, you'll be avoiding alcohol. When you wake up on March 14th, you're gonna put the patch on right away, maybe put a mini lozenge in right away, and then you'll be ready to go, okay? But there's one other thing we wanna make sure happens, and that is that you get enough support. We wanna make sure that people are there to support you, that you feel like you have someone to turn to if you're having a hard time or anything like that. Um, are there any friends or family that would be supportive? Yeah, I'm sure my sister would be really supportive. Okay, great. So I'll write down. And what's your sister's name? Uh, her name is Mary. Mary. All right, so I'll write down Mary's name here. And there might be other friends or coworkers that you might want to talk to and get their support, especially if you're maybe not hanging out or going out on breaks as much. Um, a couple other resources or places for support, smokefree.gov is a great website. They have lots of information. Plus, they have a program you can sign up for that texts. Do you text? Yeah, I text my kids all the time. Okay, great. So the idea then is that you can get free texts um, that will give you some information, supportive information, um, all sorts of things to help you with your quit. Uh, the other thing is calling the quit line. 1-800-QUIT-NOW is a 24-7 resource. They have coaches there that can be supportive, that can share 
uh, tricks and tips with you that can help talk you through hard times. Whatever you need, they're there for you 24-7. Okay, and that's just at 1-800-QUIT-NOW. So I think with your plans to get ready, getting the patch and the mini lozenge on board, getting support from Mary, calling the quit line or checking out smokefree.gov, does this sound like a plan you can do? Yeah, I'm feeling really confident right now. Excellent. All right, well, there you go, and I wish you all the best on Pi Day. Awesome. Thank you so much.